Hey guys, welcome back. Today, I'm gonna to give you guys a quick unboxing and an initial thought of Bloom Sky. Bloom Sky is a product that's intending to bring um, weather information to you to a local level. And why, by that, I mean, um, you're gonna be able to basically get the information for the weather at your location, specifically at any given point in time. Not only that, you're gonna get beautiful time-lapse video that's done directly with this beautiful HD camera that's built into the unit. This is Bloom Sky, this is the solar panel, and this is the mount. Let's check it out. I'm going to go ahead and bring down these two units real quick. I'm going to go ahead and unbox the main unit itself right away. Uh, first thing we're greeted with is this is a five in one product. And by me, by that, I mean um, it has five different sensors that give you different information on it. Um, and they list you re really right there on the box. It's a UV sensor, a pressure sensor, also the ability to get humidity, rain, and temperature out of the same sensor. On top of this entire thing is an HD camera that you can use to be able to generate uh, daily time lapses. Now it generates them automatically, so you can actually go back and check them out every day. Let me open it up. And uh, let's see what we got. First thing, yeah. So the first thing we greet it with here is the mounting uh, stick. This is essentially what you could use. Now the product itself actually works pretty well by itself. Uh, the stick itself is really great for mounting it directly in the soil if you're going to mount it to the ground. Um, if you want to mount it to the wall or mount it to a, a ledge, this is where the mounting kit comes in as well as the solar panel. Now again, solar panel can function very well as well as the mounting kit using this stick. But this again, it's intended to be a basically a flexible system. Uh, we'll put this box away. And let's go ahead. And we have a charger with a US adapter option to it, of course, since now it's going to have to work in ours. And then you're able to basically charge it. Uh, the intention of this essentially is to charge the internal battery. If you're not using the solar panels or the actual mounting option, you can charge the unit itself within four to five hours. Once it's done charging, you can use it between 10 uh, to 15 days from what, I, from what they're advertising. And here it is. And we have a small packet here with some information. Let's go ahead and clear up some of the stuff off the table. This is the unit itself. It's uh, actually quite big. I'm, I'm assuming, yes, definitely much bigger than I thought it was going to be. Uh, the coloring on it, it essentially is uh, white all around. And you can notice there's a little bit of hint of blue at the bottom of the base. Uh, and then there's some sensors at the bottom. It has been uh, tested. Uh, there is a sticker. It says push here until, uh, uh, push until faint click. Uh, this is basically where you'd be able to basically turn it on. There's a power button, there's a Wi-Fi button on here, and then there is a weather sealed power plug that you're able to charge the unit itself from. So very easy, very simple. I'm hoping there's some charge on it, uh, but we'll go ahead and put it down. There's a few little stickers. We'll remove those right away. This is from the camera. I'll put that here and as you can see here the camera itself is mounted to the top it's facing upwards so obviously this is intended for sky-based time-lapse videos um, unfortunately it doesn't do sideways so from a mounting point of view once you put it together the unit itself will look like this you can mount it directly into the ground um, and it'll work and again the stick itself is just intended to keep it uh, stationed and it'll work really well we're going to remove the mount and then we'll go through to the next pieces that came with it I'm going to keep this on the table for you guys right here with the instruction manual. Next, we're going to go through unboxing solar panel. Now, the solar panel's intention is intended there just mostly for giving you the ability to not have to recharge it every 10 to 15 days. Uh, the reason you do this essentially is if for continuous use, if you're mounting it, of course, to a position where you're not going to be able to access it every day or once every two, uh, every two to three weeks, having this as an option is a really, really good part. Uh, the option of installation is very simple. I'll show you guys real quick here in the instruction. Uh, essentially, is you can mount it straight by itself. You can mount it directly and connect the solar panel to it. Um, of course, you can mount the solar panel through it and it'll look like this. Or you can mount it using the actual provided mount, uh, which means that the stick goes through the top part and then the solar panel gets mounted to this little, uh, it almost looks like a visa mount and then you can connect it and everything works together. We'll take the grid 
and it looks like it's pretty much just a simple piece, a uh, simple assembly. Uh, let's go ahead and take out the box and then we'll open up the package. It actually has some weight, it's pretty, pretty decent weight here and we get some stakes to be able to basically mount it directly to the ground and the screws that you'd need to be able to mount it from the uh, mount option here in the back. You notice there's a little mount and we're able to, I'm assuming this is the part that comes off. So this is the mount itself. If we just pop it up from here, you're able to use this piece to mount it um, directly to the uh, wall mounter, the, the wall mount itself, and then you'll be able to use it itself. And then, or you can use the two hangers here to be able to basically position it on the ground to basically get the best optimal sun. Uh, and the intention of it here is to charge your unit so that you don't have to get access to it. This is great if you're going to be mounting the actual weather station to a point where it's something that you can't access on a daily basis. This just keeps it going. It keeps it topped off, uh, charged, you never have to worry about it, and you'll always have access to your system. Uh, the only things that we have in the back here is the same type of a connector that you have with the other one. Uh, same type of plug connector that you plug directly into your Bloom Sky um, and it just keeps it charged. It only works with the Bloom Sky and then they provide us with some screws for the, uh, for the mount itself. So we'll put this to the side. And last but not least, we're going to go with the mount itself. This is the last piece of the system. And this one comes with uh, four screws that are, will help us mount this directly into a, wood, a piece of wood, a ledge, uh, or even to a siding to the, to, of your house uh, or your premises. Let's go ahead and put this here. And the last thing here is basically the mount itself. It's very, very solid. No question about it itself. It's a screw mount based uh, system. So what gives you the ability here is you can unscrew it, mount it. This is if you're gonna screw it to a ledge somewhere you can actually put it on and then put it and make it very steady. Uh, the Bloom Sky itself would fit through here, down to this position, of course. So you'd have it pointing directly to the sun. The uh, solar panel would be fitted in this position and then you can actually just connect the power cable to it and it'll start charging itself and very, very well built. Uh, this is the four screws that you'd be able to use to screw here and then mount it to a wall. That way you don't have to worry about it. It's, it seems very sturdy as far as the, uh, the construction itself. So let me see here, does it actually... So from a position of stand, you can only really mount it upwards. I would not recommend it installing any other way as this is very sturdy, but the top part, unfortunately, I don't think is as sturdy as it is because the mechanism in the middle here is basically just connected. But overall, this is basically how you're going to keep it since it's going to be facing upward. Let's go ahead and switch over to the application itself and we'll go ahead and set it up. Uh, the other thing I wanted to show you guys here, this is the Bloom Sky website. They're running a really good promotion for $189. You'll be able to pick up the entire system. That's 30% off the original price. I went ahead and mounted the Bloom Skies directly on one of my ledges in front of my house. It fits really nice. The camera angle is really good. The sun exposure is really good. To go ahead and set up the actual unit itself, first thing you want to do is power it on. Install the Bloom Sky application on your device and go directly under your profile and we'll be able to go in and add our device. Uh, the main thing we want to do here essentially is just say, okay, then here is going to tell us that basically we need to set up the Wi-Fi connection for the Bloom Sky unit itself to connect to our network. It recognized the current network that I'm connected to. I'm just going to go ahead and put my credentials. Once you put in the credentials himself, the unit itself will contact it over the Wi-Fi signal that it's on. It turns flashing green now as opposed to flashing red and it tells us that it connected. The big caveat here that we wanna make sure that you guys are aware of is it only connects to 2.4 gigahertz networks. Unfortunately, it does not have any compatibility right now with five gigahertz. So if you have a five gigahertz router, make sure you have the 2.4 turned on and available, preferably named a different name so that you can have two different networks running. And currently for me, I have that, so that's how I'm able to get it configured. Uh, once it's configured, you can name it. It automatically pops in with a, a name that I've already named it in the past. I reset it, basically, I just want to show you guys how I set it up. Uh, and then once you're done, you're pretty much set. It uh, saves the information, the application itself. We'll go ahead and zoom into that right now. You have the information as far as your account, your password, you can log out. Uh, the other thing here is your devices. This is what you'd able to go in if you had to go in, set up different uh, options. It has the name of it, the location. Uh, again, you can rename it if you'd like. The location itself, you can recalibrate it if it's pulled up the wrong address. You can make it a public or a, pro uh, or a, uh, a pri private profile. 
as far as basically if you want to get notifications for rain uh, for uh, battery basically levels if you're using the solar panels this may not be a big of an issue you can delete the device and of course reset up the router in case you have any problems with the network connection but other than that here you just basically have the unit itself configuration uh, set up setting up the units themselves temperatures uh, you know notifications the help the terms of use blog information again in the current version and the build number of the software that's on it and again if you want to add another unit itself uh, it does support multiples but currently only have one uh, you're able to select it go in and depending on how long it's been available it looks like you can actually go back in days and see how the different um, time-lapse videos were generated from it and you can play them as you can see here it's starting to play the video straight the temperature's changing as time goes on and it goes during daylight it doesn't cover anything during nighttime as there's really not much changing during night even though if you do connect to it during the nighttime you do get to see a darker image but it's just not in a time-lapse fashion um, and again, it keeps going, going, going all the way till the sun sets and then it stops. So as you guys saw with the hands-on and the setup, it's pretty simple. The system is really well put together. Uh, I'm going to get a chance to basically mount this outside and start basically using this. Uh, overall, I've been using the Bloom Sky weather application for about a week now just to check it out and see how it works. And it's really, really nice to see that it's all around the U.S., around the world even. And you can go through the map and start looking at different places and see how the weather is and look at different time lapses. And for me, that's really nice because that's something that you can't get out of any other weather app. Uh, it's actual real weather information of how the weather was in the specific location. So if you're traveling somewhere, you go in somewhere and you want to say, okay, I want to see how it's going to be. Is it really raining in that area? Is it really that cold over there? You can see how it is. Um, and really the main benefit of this uh, the unit itself is it's adjustable to where you need it to be. It has a massive sensor built in and works directly with your Wi-Fi. And hopefully by the time I'm able to finish this review, uh, we'll be able to see also how we can get this integrated with our Nest unit as it's also one of the main features that they're trying to work on right now is having it connected and work with a Nest unit. Uh, so really nice, really excited. Uh, let me know in the comments what you guys think about this. And hopefully you guys will see the video is going to come up on XDA in the near future as far as the full review. Uh, so I'm going to get a chance hopefully to mount it today and get it up and running. Uh, but main thing they also make sure they want us to do here is charge it. So like and subscribe. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And I will see you guys in the next one.